In order to break your silence, you're expected to have been, at least for a period, silent. That's not so with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Almost immediately after they chose the hedonistic joys of La La Land over the United Kingdom, they ditched charity galas in rainy old blighty in favour of the tinsel glitz of sunlit California. And these mercifully former working members of the royal family have been absolutely out but silent. Even the announcement of Meghan Markle's second pregnancy exposed the plastic pair for what they are. Their favourite London-based photographer reportedly took the snap remotely via an iPad. And so it was that Meghan, no doubt on the spur of the moment, laid a sort of softly curled hair across the knees of a barefoot, why was he barefoot? I don't know, Prince Harry, who beamed, no doubt on an impulse, adoringly down at Meghan. And the photographer swiftly issued, I'm persuaded, with complete spontaneity, the following poetic statement. He says, with the tree of life behind them and the garden that repre representing fertility, life and moving forward, they didn't need any direction because they are and always have been waltzing through life together as absolute soulmates. And the US media was duly moved to a collective sigh of complete ecstasy. It took the Daily Star to helpfully bring a cartload of ants down to that particular set and by headline in the picture, publicity, publicity shy, publicity, publicity shy woman tells 7.67 pe billion people I'm pregnant. And that's another way, folks, which objective royal commentator can possibly argue that Harry and Meghan have given up their duties here in Blighty to pursue a more private life in California. Not a week passes by without one or both of the Sussexes choosing to appear in the media, whether on Memorial Day when they were photographed laying flowers on a grave in California or releasing a video urging the, the American people to vote when Meghan even wrote a, an article announcing she had miscarried a baby. What was the need if you live in a private life? What public service was carried out by going public on such a private matter? It seems to me that they moved from service to their queen and country to pandering to walkery and wackery in Hollywood because they weren't the main event in the UK and knew they never would be. And they wanted publicity, but on their own terms. It's to hell with the, any idea of privacy. Sitting above the political fray explains why the royal family is popular across all four constituent parts of our United Kingdom. And I reckon they, the, as the unifying force of it, the Sussexes risk demystifying that magic of monarchy. And if reports are correct, I think Her Majesty the Queen is absolutely right to contemplate removing their royal titles from this pair before they actually do harm to that most precious institution. Let them enjoy their deals, their platforms, their exposure and their trinkets in California. I don't grudge them that, but the institution of British monarchy is much, much far too important to be harmed by the Sussex's own reality telly, Spotify and their, even their own alternative gongs. It, you know, an alternative award ceremony to Her Majesty the Queen. And as private people, I think they're free to earn the money any way they want. But as Royal Highnesses, Netflix deals and Oprah interviews are grubby and demeaning, both to our country and that cherished institution. And this is a couple, let's not forget, who seem to have more in common with the Kardashians than they do with the Windsors. And I think, folks, the United Kingdom and the Royal Family are better off without this attention-seeking pair. I'll see you next time.